In this video, we are going to explore subtractive synthesis. Subtractive synthesis is both the earliest and simplest form of synthesis. To use an analogy, subtractive synthesis is like having a block of marble and chiseling away until we only have David. Subtractive synthesis makes use of simple sound generation and processing units. These units are either contained in an analog or digital hardware synthesizer or software emulation of a synthesizer. The key sound generation and processing units used in subtractive synthesis can be summarised as follows. Oscillators that produce a sound rich in harmonics, such as a triangle, sawtooth or square waveform. Filters that remove high frequency or low frequency content and may boost the resonance of the sound. Envelopes that are able to shape the attack, decay, sustain and release of not only the amplitude, but also filters and a low frequency oscillator, an oscillator that acts as a modulator or automatic controller parameters within the synthesizer. Let's demonstrate the principles of how subtractive synthesis works using the Roland Juno 6. We'll start by setting up our oscillator. We're going to use a sawtooth waveform as it contains both odd and even harmonics and therefore has a rich sound. To make the sound a bit thicker, I'm going to add a square wave sub oscillator. That's an oscillator with odd harmonics, an octave below our other oscillator. Finally, I'm going to add just a touch of noise to give the sound a bit of grit. We can now adjust the frequency content using the high pass filter, which removes low frequencies, and the low pass filter, which removes high frequencies. Further, playing with the resonance or cue, adjusts the peak of the low pass filter cutoff and attempts to simulate instrument resonance. Overall, I'm happy so far, so let's adjust the way the amplitude changes over time. We can experiment with the attack time to make the sound come in slowly or quickly. The decay time to determine if it fades out quickly or slowly. The sustain level, which determines the constant amplitude whilst the key is held. And the release time to determine if the note continues to play when I let go of the key. Not only does the envelope have a profound effect on the sound's amplitude shape, but by applying the envelope control to the filter, I can adjust the way the harmonic content changes over time. These changes can be immediate to a subtle evolution of the sound. Finally, I can use a low frequency oscillator to modulate the low pass filter. I can change the speed or rate of the modulator, the delay time or how long it takes to react, and the amount of effect the low frequency oscillator has on the filter. Again, these changes can be subtle to the extreme. Further adjusting and importantly experimenting with the controls of the filters, envelope and low frequency oscillator can produce quite a broad range of sounds. In our next video, Luke is going to extend our exploration of synthesis and look at additive synthesis.